Electronics. This is a part 5 of NESAC ISRO Technical Assistance Solutions. Okay, so let us see what is the first question. A super heterodyne receiver is designed to receive a 1 gigahertz signal. Okay, so the frequency of uh, the RF signal is 1 gigahertz. The local op oscillator frequency is 900 megahertz. What is the image frequency to be rejected? So, uh, we know that in the case of a super heterodyne receiver, there is a mixer stage. In this mixer stage, your RF signal, that is the uh, message signal, is mixed with a local oscillator signal. And this local oscillator signal is having some frequency. Let it be FLO. It is mixed with the FRF. Okay. So, here, during this mixing, an intermediate frequency FIF is produced. Okay, so this is a very simple uh, way of mixing of two signals of two different frequencies. F RF is the your message signal uh, to be received, and FLO is the frequency of your local oscillator signal, which produces a uh, signal to get mixed with the your message signal. And by mixing of these two signals, you will get an intermediate frequency wave. Or intermediate frequency you will get. Now this FIF. I am just saying some basics about this super heterodyne receiver. So this FIF. How this FIF value is varying. Based on your frequency of your RF wave. If FRF is greater than FLO. Then your intermediate frequency is FRF minus FLO. And if FRF is less than FLO, that is local oscillator frequency, then FIF, that is intermediate frequency, which is produced after, which is produced after mixing of these two signals is FLO minus FRF. Okay, so this is the intermediate frequency. In this question, they are asking regarding the image frequency. Let us come to that before. You just have to know these two frequencies okay so if you don't know anything about this super heterodyne receiver you should know this equations okay so this intermediate frequency is produced by mixing of rf wave frequency and the local oscillator frequency okay uh, in this question your uh, rf wave is having 1 gigahertz of uh, frequency and the local oscillator is having 900 megahertz of uh, frequency so which one is greater your RF wave is having more frequency. So, FRF is greater than FLO. And this is our equation for the intermediate frequency. Now, if this is the intermediate frequency, then image frequency FIM to be rejected. Or the image frequency equation is FIM is equal to FRF minus 2 FIF. Okay. So, this is the relation. Now, we know that the uh, value of FIF is FRF minus FLO. Right. So, you will get FRF minus 2FRF plus 2FLO. Right. So, you will get like this. So, the equation is 2FLO minus F. Uh, is the FIM for this case. Okay, so the image frequency equation will be 2 times FLO minus FRF which is the RF wave frequency. So you will get 2 into FLO is 900 megahertz minus 1 gigahertz. You will get the answer is 800 megahertz is the answer for your image frequency to get rejected. Correct answer here is option D which is 800 megahertz. Next question is this. A meter has a square low scale. For 2 ampere current deflection is 90 degree. What would be the current for deflection of 45 degree? So this a meter it is used for measuring of current is having a deflection of uh, deflection scale of square law and uh, we have been given two deflection angles and one current we need to find the 
other current which is produced by the second deflection of 45 degree. Now what is the relationship for this square low scale type of a meter? The relation is I1 square by I2 square is equal to theta1 by theta2. Okay, so I1 is 2 ampere square by I2 we need to find is equal to theta1 is 90 degree by 45 degree. Okay, so you will get I2 is equal to 0 0.707 ampere. If you solve it, you will get the value as 0 0.707 which is option D is the correct answer. The question is this. Which flip-flop has VHDL code below? Process clock if clock tick event and clock is equal to 1. Output equal to input. N if N process. So we have not discussed anything about VHDL till now. Uh, in any of the videos but this is a very simple code if you don't even know VHDL you just have to read these statements and then you will understand that much simple code is this just uh, don't consider it as a VHDL code just consider it as some sentences written process clock if clock tick event and clock is equal to 1 that is when clock equal to 1 your output equal to input and if and process leave it so, when clock is equal to 1, your output is equal to input. Which flip-flop is it? It is actually D flip-flop. Okay. This is a very, very basic thing of VHDL coding. So, which, uh, which consists of process, clock and all. So, we are going to, we are going to monitor here for the clock. That is, whenever the clock is 1, we have output is equal to input. That is, input is passed down to the output when clock is 1. That much is this code say. So this is corresponding to the D flip flop. And the correct answer here is option C which is D flip flop. Now consider that if the output is equal to complement of input. Okay. Say it is not of input. Then which flip flop is it? It is toggle flip flop. Okay, so there is one more uh, one more variable we need. T also need to be 1. Okay, so consider that we are uh, looking for clock and also there is another variable defined for T. When T is equal to 1, output equal to complement of input. That is inside this we will write, that is inside this process statement we will write. If T is equal to 1, then output is equal to complement of input and t is equal to 0 means output is equal to input. Such flip-flop is a toggle flip-flop. For the case of JK and SR, we need to actually write the various combinations of uh, input and we have to write the corresponding output. Okay. So, so like these, the questions can also come. If you are, even if you are not aware of uh, VHDL coding, don't just, uh, just don't skip these type of questions. Just read and if you could make out anything from these statements, please answer the question. Okay. Here anyway, it is a very, very simple coding. It is C is the correct answer, which is D flip-flop. Next question. Let me remove this. In a BJT, the base current is 2 microambia. Beta is equal to 100. IC and IE we need to find. Very, very simple question. So, the base current IB is being given. IB is equal to 2 microambier. And beta is given as 100. So, what is the relation for IC and beta? IC equal to beta times IB. So, IC is equal to 100 into 2 microambier, which is equal to 200 microambier is the value for IC. 200 microambier. Now, we need to find IE, which is emitter current. So, collector current we have obtained as 200 microambier. What is the relation between IC, IE and IB? That is with these three currents, what is the relation? Total emitter current IE is equal to sum of collector and base current. So, 2 microambier plus 200 microambier which is equal to 202 microambier is the total emitter current. So, the correct answer will be A which is 200 microambier and 202 microambier. A is the correct answer. If two resistors of value 100 ohm plus or minus 1 percentage connected in series, the total resistance is dash. 
200 plus or minus 2 percentage B, 200 plus or minus 1 percentage C, 100 plus or minus 2 percentage D, 100 plus or minus 1 percentage. So we have discussed about these type of questions, about this question also and this voltmeter type of question we have discussed in the video called electronic instrumentation and measurement. We have discussed a lot of questions regarding this in part 1 and part 2. So I hope that these uh, that after seeing this question in this question paper, I hope that these type of questions are really essential and also useful for those who are going to write the ISRO technical assistant examination for any of the location, VSSC, SDSCL, LPSC or uh, SSFC. So all these locations, these type of questions are important for you. So I request you to please watch those videos also. If you want, I'll mention that in the description box. The link of those videos, I'll uh, mention in the description box. Okay, please do have a look. So here, the two resistors are having value 100 ohm plus or minus 1 percentage. And they are connected in series connection. So the total resistance will be, that is we have to include the error also. So since it is series connection, 100 plus 100, total resistance will be 200. And the error also, since it is series correction, we have to add. That is 1 percentage plus 1 percentage, which is equal to 2 percentage. So, the total resistance is 200 plus or minus 2 percentage will be the error. Okay. That is the total resistance will be 200 plus or minus 2 percentage. We are adding the resistance together and the error together, since it is series connection. So, the correct answer is option A, which is 200 plus or minus 2 percentage. Next question is a very, very simple question. Anybody can answer it. I am not even included the options of it. The, uh, the question is A plus B the whole complement is equal to dash. Okay, so you have to answer this without even looking to the option. It is simply application of De Morgan's law. So you have to use this law for simplification of a lot of Boolean expression. We can use this law. And this law is stating that A plus B the whole complement. If A and B are two digital numbers or expressions, A and B the whole complement is equal to A complement into B complement. And A, B the whole complement equal to A complement plus B complement. This is the B Morgan's law. So here in this question, they are given A plus B the whole complement is equal to A complement into B complement is the answer. Okay, moving on to the next question. So in this video, I have tried to include little bit difficult questions from those from the question paper of NESAC. Okay, next question. A 300 meter, 300 volt, volt meter has 2 percentage full scale error. If volt meter reads 200 voltage, the actual voltage lies between dash. Okay, so uh, I have included this type of question in the uh, instrumentation video also. So, uh, while including that, I was receiving a request whether this full scale error has to be, uh, that is, has to be taken with the full, that is the 300 voltage, which is a full scale voltage or the voltage to be measured. You have to, if the error is 2 percentage, you have to take the 2 percentage of 200 which is the voltage to be measured not the full scale voltage which is 300 okay anyway so here the error is 2 percentage and we are going to measure 200 voltage if voltmeter reads 200 volt the actual voltage lies between dash okay so 200 when we are reading 200 volt you have to include a 2 percentage error also. It is 2 by 100. So it will be 4 volt is the error while reading 200 volt. Okay. So the actual voltage that is when reading 200 volt, you have to think of a plus or minus 4 volt. That is the actual voltage can be either 200 plus 4 or 200 minus 4. Since this 4 volt is also being included in the error, that is the voltmeter is giving this much of error means it can be 196 to 204 can be the volt, can be the actual reading, this can be the range of your voltmeter's reading when it is giving a 200 volt. It can be either 196 or it can be 
204. Okay, correct answer is option C which is 196 volt to 200, 204 volt. The voltage can actually vary because it can give a full scale error of 2 percentage. Okay, correct answer is option C is the correct answer. TTL logic, the typical range of high logic is dash. That is they are asking for the uh, the voltage ranges for which we are going to consider the logic has to be high. So uh, for digital uh, representation there is high high values and low values. So if you are considering for TTL logic there are certain rep to, uh, certain uh, range of uh, voltages for which we fix the uh, values as high and low for the input side and also for the output side. So we have discussed about these in very very detail in one of the previous videos. Okay. So uh, here for TTL logic, we are going to discuss about uh, the TTL standard 5 volt logic that is 0 to 5 volt. 0 is a ground, 5 volt is a VCC and uh, there are various voltage levels for VOL, VIL, VIH and VOH. Now what is VOL? VOL is the maximum voltage at the output side yet to be considered as a low voltage that is 0.4 volt up to 0.4 volt we are considering as a so, uh, that is up to 0.4 volt we are considering it as a low voltage at the output side so, since it is output we are taking VO then L then if it is VO or if it is VIL means it is the input side the maximum voltage at the input side yet to be considered as a low voltage it is 0.8 volt. So these voltages we are fixing based on the standard parameters of the TTL circuit. Okay. Next, what is VIH? It is the, the voltage, minimum voltage at the input side. Since it is I, it is input side. Input side considered uh, to be considered as a high voltage. And also if it is VOH means it is at the output side. So the max uh, the minimum voltage at the output side to be considered as a high voltage so this voh so we are going to say in general if it is o here it is at the output side if it is i here it is at the input side then the next variable can be either h for high or it can be l representing low so these are the various voltage levels for the TTL for high and low at the input and the output side. Okay, now we are going, going to see the question once again. In TTL logic, the typical range of high logic is dash. We are going to only look for the high voltages, not, about, not for the low voltages. So this is VIH, which is the high voltage at input side. This is the high voltage VOH at the output side. So it ranges from 2 volt to 2.7 volt. So this is the range of voltage. Okay. So earlier I have written it as 2 volt. Now I have corrected it. I am sorry for that. If you have uh, drawn it earlier, please do correct it as 2.7. Anyway, the voltage is for VIH it is 2 volt and then up for to uh, be high at output side it is 2.7 volt. So it ranges from 2 volt to 2.7, right? So what is the range? 3 volt to 3.6? No. 2.25 to 2.7? Yes. 4.5 to 5.7? No. 1.7 to 1.9? No. So the voltage range closest to the high voltage level is 2.25 to 2.75 is the voltage range representing the high logic. Okay. So the correct answer here is option B is the correct answer. So these are the questions which I have included in this video. We will be seeing in the uh, next part of this video. Uh, we'll almost complete uh, all the questions within the last part, that is part 6. So I hope that these videos were useful for uh, for those people who are preparing for ISRO Technical Assistant Examination. And if you want more videos uh, regarding this exam preparation or uh, regarding the core subject of electronics, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.